Okay, we are live. Excellent. Right, let's start some stuff over again. Hello, hello, everybody. It's been a while. I hope you're all doing okay. Um, in case you're new here, my name is Rachel. I'm an archaeologist, and generally every two weeks I get together with my internet friends and I play archaeology themed video games. So <laughs> that's what we're doing today. We're playing Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Hi, Jean. Um, and the city of Kamun, the next level. I think we're over halfway through the game now, hopefully. I had a bit of a break for a few weeks because uh, I was off on a cruise giving some guest lectures. And But we arrived back on Wednesday. Uh, the cruise itself was a an interesting experience with um, some some speed bumps that um, make it a bit hard to enjoy. Um, our luggage got left basically in the UK, so we spent an 18-day cruise without all of our packed stuff. We just, I mean, we arrived with hand luggage, and then we were able to do some shopping to get some stuff. But yeah, that was <laughs> not my favorite. I also got a little bit of seasickness and stuff on the boat, but I'm actually going to do a whole video on the experience um, later in May uh, to give you all the details of kind of what it's like. Um, the cruise line we were on was Fred Olson, which is generally geared towards a much um, older clientele, tends to be retired people. The cruise that we were on was actually, we were on the last leg but it was a um, 101 night world cruise. So people had been on that boat for over three months, which is kind of crazy and kind of the only thing you can really do if you're retired. So <laughs> um, yeah, I hope that everybody's been good while I've been gone and, and um, everything's going okay. Uh, channel still ticked over while I've been gone. Big highlight is the Graham Hancock and Clint Dibble debate that happened on the Joe Rogan podcast, which was literally released, I think, the day that I was flying home. So I've not had a chance to watch it yet, but I've been reading about it on like Reddit and a few other places. So I don't know if I should do just like a live stream watching it. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that uh, copyright wise um, because it is four and a half hours long. Um, <laughs> but uh, I will, I do anticipate doing some kind content and we'll be back to be doing the live streams every other week for a little while I might have to take a bit of a pause in May but um only for like maybe one week or so and hi lonely one I missed you guys too I miss playing games and um being on the internet on a regular basis without having to pay an extortionate amount of money to connect to Starlink which is how it works on a cruise line so yeah, um, just giving everyone a few minutes to show up and then we'll head into the game. I did also manage to get some prep done, so I played the game for about 20 minutes to a half hour before starting the stream, so it shouldn't hopefully be as painful as Grimes' Coachella set. <laughs> um, or that time when I couldn't figure out the controls for about a half hour. <laughs> um... Yeah, okay, well, we've got five people here, so according to my streaming thing, so let's jump right into playing. As always, feel free to put questions or comment in the live chat, and I can try and answer them as we play the game. So we're starting in a new... Ooh, this is fun. Um, oh, great. Enemies off the bat. Um, in the city of Kamun, which is presumably an Egypt-based level. Um, which is fine. Uh, if you're new here or if you've been here for a while, uh, my it's not my specialty in terms of what I have to greet. Like, I'm not an Egyptologist, but um, I did study ancient Egypt during my undergrad, and it has always been my favorite ancient civilization so I'm excited to see all of the references in here so we've got a big underground sphinxy right off the bat um, good place to compare the graphics okay 
Ooh, <laughs> that's a flat looking Sphinx face. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, a little bit more definition to this guy. Although still, it's interesting that they uh, clearly are modeling after the real Sphinx by having the nose partially struck off. Um, also, this like the the Great Sphinx at Giza. Fun fact, um, you know, is the largest and most famous Sphinx that we have. But uh, Sphinx, it's not the only one. Like one in Egypt, they're actually quite a popular. Um, deck like sculptural style at some point um, and you can find like rows of ram headed sphinxes I think it's ram headed ones leading you to the temple of Luxor and there was um, I can't remember what the exact site was but there was a news story a while back about um, excavators finding a like sphinx statue of a pharaoh at a site um, why do I feel like it was Dendera? I could be wrong. Don't take my word for it. Okay, we have a door here. I can't see anything. Oh, okay, so there's a key. So that means I have to get a key. Nice gold door. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Ian, I just finished replaying Tomb Raider 4 after the remasters, and most of the game is in Egypt. Oh, that's fun have to look into it for what I'm going to do after. Okay, so just having a look around, we have this column here, which clearly has stuff I have to put into it and is surrounded by water. So if we're going to swim around. Oh, magnum clip. Don't want to miss those for sure. Come on, Lara, pick up the gun stick. I'm having a hard time seeing this because uh, the sun is just at exactly that right level um, in my house where I basically can't see anything <laughs> on screen. Oh, I see something over there. More magnum clip. I'll take those if she would actually just pick them up. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. interesting over here. Ooh, there's something in this corner. <clears throat> Aha. So if I can get to this column, this is the thing that I find really like outdated well I guess outdated about this game is that the camera is just it's so hard to like line yourself up to stuff okay so I think I missed all right we'll walk forward and then we'll do our jump back uh, nope <laughs> messed that up okay there's something on top of that column so I can't see where I am Are they doing remasters for the other games? Oh, that would be cool if they did, isn't it? I mean, I, like, does anybody know what, anything about how successful and, like, how successful would be for sold? Because um, I'd be interested to know that. Um, I imagine they've probably done pretty well because, you know, nostalgia is a huge um, driver nowadays for lots of different things. Aha! Ooh, shotgun shells. All right. All right, I'm on top of here. So I can't go through those windows. I can't obviously jump on there. That door, I'm just assuming, is closed. And I don't think I could run up that because that looks like a sliding thing. Um... Ooh, oh, okay. Have to go back here. Ooh, okay. Let's see. This little camera feature is very helpful. All right. Um, jump down into the water. Let's go 
absorb whatever damage and then we'll try and climb the back of this thing. Oh, feels like ages, guys. Feels like ages. I mean, it kind of has been ages, I guess, but feels like ages since I've been on here because especially for the cruise because the like you can pay for Wi-Fi on the cruise, but it doesn't allow um, streaming. So like, ah, okay. Um, or sorry, I say streaming, video streaming. So you can't use like Netflix. You can't, like if you try to go on YouTube, it's just like, it doesn't, the page doesn't even load. So um, the only thing that you can kind of use is, um, if I'm just gonna walk here, um, is like, you can use Instagram and I presume TikTok still and do like short, short content. Um, so like I could still do reels and stuff like that on Instagram, but yeah, I didn't do a lot. And like there's Wi-Fi at the ports, but <laughs> okay. Take these, these valuable, valuable shotgun shells. What's over here? Bet you that's for the thing, the door underneath the sink. So that's convenient. Ouch. I can't see anything, so let's switch the graphics here. <clears throat> ah, ha, ha. Excellent. Right. I know like the vintage graphics are good, but I really do prefer these ones. Okay, so I'm gonna get up high. Because if there's anything I know about this game, it's that there's always a Flipping animal waiting to attack you the minute you get into a new area. Oh, and there's a med kit right there. So that made that slightly worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where this room's going to go, but... Aha! See? I was correct. Bad kitty. My cat spent some time at our friend's house being spoiled rotten while we were gone. But she forgave us fairly quickly after we came back. So I appreciated that. She still loves us. Well, as close as a cat can come to feeling love. She still um, she cuddled us when we came back. So that was nice. <laughs> This cat. And the cat came back. Does anybody else know? Um, the cat came back. Uh, it's like a. I well, I say famous. It's like a, what, like a ten or ten minute Canadian cartoon that used to air on the TV that has a really interesting animation style. Um, that I used to watch when I was young, and the song is. When the cat came back, they thought he was a goner, and the cat came back the very next day. The cat came back. Da -na 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 -na. It's an earworm. But it, the cartoon is the story of this man who um, finds a cat and then spends the entire time trying to get rid of the cat, but because a cat has nine lives, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, I need this panther to come back so that I can finish this off because I won't be comfortable doing anything until I've moved on from this, because then I'm just going to be constantly afraid that I'm going to get attacked. All right, well, maybe I'll just... No! No! Get back up there! Get back up there! The cat's going to eat you. Okay. The mechanic for these, for these cats is... Uh-huh. I hear you. Where are you? Aha. No! Get 
Die kitty. Okay, well. Killed it, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't go through there. Aha! Oh, I should save. Yes, thank you, lonely one. And not load. Save. Um, let's do an empty slot here. So if I need to come back later, because I am planning once we actually finish the game. Ah, no, kitty. Um, to do like an actual in-depth video on the channel about all the archaeology in the game, because obviously as I'm playing it, it's a bit slapdash. Like I've not properly been able to look up and reference stuff. Um, so a lot of the things that I'm saying are it's stuff that's like coming off the top of my head. So, like, oh, okay, so this is, ah, I see where we are. Um, do, do, do. City of Kamun, will say, not the real place. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, I've never come across an Egyptian city called Kamun. Um, I think it's probably also the, the name of it in the game, I think is an allusion to, um, is like basically a bit of a, it's probably meant to be a bit of a misspelling of Khmum. Um, who I'd have to refresh. Uh, what exactly he's the god of? But um, it's spelled K H N. Oh God, no! Well, okay. <laughs> Didn't realize that was gonna happen. I have to go fight the other cat again. Such an Indiana Jones reference as well. Die kitty. Also, panthers, black panthers, I do not believe are native to Egypt. I think if they really wanted this to be more accurate, it should have been leopards. You see lots of paintings of Egyptian priests wearing leopard skins, and like that's a quite a common motif that you see in their artwork, but don't see lots of black panthers to my knowledge. You gotta kill this crocodile. Oh no, I scared him off now. Yeah, never trust the slope. Never trust the slope in real life archaeology either. Where's this guy going? Kill this crocodile. Okay. And I've learned my lesson. Do not go up that ramp. Go investigate what this is over here. Ooh, kitty. Cute cat. On a pedestal. Oh, I read that this is based on the, um, like an Egyptian, um, like a, a statue of Bast or Bastet uh, that's in the British Museum. Look how the cat's got a nose ring as well. Like how baller is this, is this cat for having a nose ring? That's pretty cool. What's the risk with slopes in real life? Well, I say slopes, like, I mean, they're, they could collapse as well. Um, <laughs> I think that's generally what I was trying to say. Like, um, and also, you know, having to hike up stuff and you don't know what's, what's happening. Like, uh, you don't necessarily always know what's on the other side of it. And it's always a trek. Um, okay. We got some nice, I think that, I think the woman there is going to be Hathor and or Sekhmet. And this guy looks like he's... Again, I don't read Egyptian um, hieroglyphs, but that looks like that's supposed to be the god Amun in his ram-headed form. Oh, and there's something... Okay, so I, need, I should be able to get up there, which I suspect will have goodies. Um, there are examples of like, well, yes and no. Like, um, did you guys see that video um, of an archaeologist demonstrating why um, tomb robbers end up dead a lot that went around the internet this week? I'll have to see if I can find it and feature it on Archaeology News, actually. Um, but uh, he's opening a tomb 
um, oh, there's a mirror. I need to figure out where he is at. Um, he's opening, like, presumably some kind of shaft tomb somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, yeah, I bet you would come up here. Um, and takes a rock away and then immediately takes out a blowtorch and basically demonstrates that that tomb had been filled with CO2 because um, it's just the air literally lights on fire as everything ventilates. So he's saying that, you know, like a treasure hunter or somebody who doesn't know what they're doing would probably immediately jump down that shaft and then probably suffocate from the lack of oxygen before they even got in there. So um, that's an example, I would say, of a real life booby trap. Also, um, like, not so much, oh god, I can't see anything. I have no idea where I'm going right now. Um, ah. Hello. Um, there are some tombs, like, the, I don't think the, the Pyramid of Khufu so much had a booby trap as probably it seemed. Oh, and, oh great, another crocodile who's not attacking me, so that's convenient. Um, or at least not booby traps in terms of, like, rolling rocks down things. They had lots of, I think, like, stone doors that were closed after the tomb was made, um, which weren't intended to be opened, obviously, but were. Um, come on, shoot the crocodile. Ah! No, I don't want to be in the water right now. Um, but I think probably the most famous, um, example that I know of is, um, the tomb of the first, um, Chinese emperor, um, I can't remember, uh, I can't remember what his name is, but he's, like, the first guy that made the Chinese, he's, he's, he's famous, he has like all of these stories about how he pursued immortality by having lots of mercury, um, he's the guy that the third mummy movie is roughly based off of, etc, and he has a really, the famous, um, the terracotta warriors are from his tomb, um, which we know where it is in China, but, um, it's not been excavated, I think partially because obviously like reverence for him as a historical like figure etc but then also like they've sent in some robots and done some testing of it and um based on like texts of what the tomb contained they think that it has like really high 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 levels of mercury in it which is obviously quite deadly um and um they don't know what other booby traps might be in there so they've never I mean, we are at a point where we could probably send in a drone and or other robots to um, investigate, but uh, the Chinese authorities, for whatever reason, haven't decided to do that yet, so. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, there's interesting. These look like wasps, but they really should be bees, because Egyptians loved bees. They actually, uh, there's some, is it a title? It's something, I can't remember what the exact title is, but there's like an ancient Egyptian title that's like Lord or person of the sedge and bees. Um, and here on the walls, we have some papyrus, some pretty typical Egyptian artwork. There's a lady on the wall there, maybe picking the chin chi ha Yeah. Yeah. Um... That's a very cool statue. Chemical traps. Well, I say chemical traps, it's, you know, it's like something that comes from, it's a natural process of decay. Uh, you know, it eats up the oxygen somewhere. I don't know if it's a deliberate trap, but I think it's more like it's a natural process that's led to the oxygen in this tomb basically disappearing and transforming into CO2. It's probably something to do with the decay. Um, because it wasn't like a super rich tomb or any, it wasn't like a king's tomb as far as I'm aware. Okay, so that lets us look back there. Alright, so I can do something with this block. Do I want to push it? Oh, I do. I think I want to push it. Uh, so I can get up top. Okay, so it looks like there's something over there. Okay. Come on, Lara. Okay. 
nature's trap. Exactly. The deadliest of all traps. It's the one that you probably should know about but weren't expecting. Okay, that's just a another that's a door. Ah, okay. So I think we want the block. Bring us up there. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> Did anybody wa else watch the um, Clint Dibble and Graham Hancock um, debate on the Joe Rogan show? And if you did, what are your thoughts? I'm very interested to know since, as I said, I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. I've just been reading like summaries and commentaries on Reddit. <clears throat> oh, what are these? Oh, nice little tables. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, one thing I will say that I like about this, which, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Oh, look, that one has a box on it. Oh, I wonder if I can go look at that or if I can take it. It is called Tomb Raider after all. I don't have to feel guilty about doing this in the game. Not that I do it in real life. <laughs> um, it's a nice looking box. Um, um, so, haven't heard of the debate. So, um, if, if, okay, Joe Rogan is the guy who, in case you're not aware, um, he used to host Survivor. That's how I know him. Um, but, oh, I wonder what that was. Um, yeah, he used to host the Survivor game back in the 90s. No, not Survivor. Yes. Fear Factor. No, he used to host Fear Factor. Apologies. Wrong, wrong, wrong thing. Um, so, yeah, he used to host Fear Factor. And now he, I'm not quite sure how this has happened because, again, it's not my area of particular. Okay, so that block has come out. Um, now he has a huge podcast audience for this podcast that he makes called The Joe Rogan Experience. And basically, I think last, okay, so I'm going to have to get out there. No. Uh, last year, it would seem that he. Um, it had Graham Hancock, who is like a leading journalist who propagates like um, conspiracy theories relating to archaeology and like Atlantis and advanced civilizations and all that kind of stuff. He had him on his show and Graham Hancock was just basically, you know, um, saying, oh, you know, archaeology, nobody wants to debate me. I've tried to do this and people won't come and talk to me, blah, blah, blah. So Flint Dibble is a, um, he's American, but he teaches in Wales and he's an archaeologist. And like, he's not even just an archaeologist. He's a like second generation archaeologist. His dad was an archaeologist, which is why his name is Flint. <laughs> um, and uh, so he said, I'll come debate you. So they had a four and a half hour debate about Graham Hancock's theories and then also Flint Dibble like each of them got to do a presentation on like why they were correct and then Joe Rogan as the kind of mediator was asking questions and um you know acting as you know I, I think the audience for it so um I've seen a few things of it and you know it's kind of interesting because there's always going to be people okay I don't even know what to do with this um there's always going to be people who are never going to be convinced no matter what um which i definitely got the feeling about for um like reading some of the comments about the show like there are some people that are just gonna like nothing is ever going to prove it to them oh i wonder if i no i can't push that um but i think there were quite a few people who uh, I mean, I read, obviously, it's the algorithm also tells, you know, and what it tells you 
or recommends for you is based upon what you do. So I'm a bit biased or I will, what the algorithm tells me might be different than what gets recommended to you guys. But I've seen a lot of people saying that Slint Dibble did a really good job of explaining things. And it seemed like Graham Hancock a lot of the time resorted to, oh, but people are picking on me. Um, but a lot of the time when he was asked for evidence, his evidence is, well, you haven't found the evidence yet, which isn't like, uh, I don't know, it's not really a good rebuttal, I would say, especially for a debate. Like, we found a lot of evidence of other things, so it doesn't really make sense that if we found evidence of other things that we won't have found evidence of these advanced civilizations that he's claiming used to exist, especially if they were as advanced as he was claiming so yeah big archaeology that's the thing that one of the things he was like oh do you believe in big archaeology which I mean honestly like I, I, like it's just so the idea that you could get a bunch of archaeologists to agree to a massive cover-up of the proportion to which he is proposing is quite comical because um yeah it's getting archaeologists to agree on something like that is like herding cats um <laughs> just not really something you could do um yeah it's also like a lot of the time with these kinds of arguments the argument is like it, it, it's 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 a straw I think it's straw man but the other thing is that people are like oh well you can't prove that it's that it didn't happen and uh, without and people who say that don't understand that you like especially with something like this maybe it's different with math and like hard sciences but like you can't prove a negative it's just like it's like me asking someone to prove that um they're not an alien prove to me <clears throat> prove to me that you're not an alien and that's and that's really hard to do because you can't like i said you can't prove that something is not you can't prove a negative like that um because I can always just be like, well, haven't given me enough proof. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think the most powerful part wasn't. I really enjoyed. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna read some of the comments. I enjoyed your discussion. I like more discussions like that. Having an expert use something as innocuous as seeds in the archaeological record to show how unlikely it is for there to have been advanced civilizations exist is really powerful evidence. Uh, it wasn't really his own hypothesis, but showing people who did good work in archaeology but were fiercely attacked. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, this, I. The thing with this idea of like other people being attacked for and then later being proven correct, thereby meaning that Graham Hancock is correct. Like, I don't think that that's a very strong ar argument because, um, like, you know, to change people who are challenging things that are like massive parts of our narrative should be challenged and should be able to present rigorous evidence. So um, that's why, like, a lot of the times when you see proposals about new things, it's like you'll you read things being like, oh, well, this is what we found, but we can't treat it as conclusive evidence. So I think a lot of the time it's those people trying to say, oh, well, that's conclusive evidence when it's maybe not precisely that um exactly it, as bill's saying in the comments um i think and 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 yeah like i mean dibble's thing you know people don't like to be challenged i think that's that's entirely valid um thing but i don't know there's a way like I think it's also just sometimes a lot to do with like this idea of um, dialogue and how people used to behave versus how they maybe behave now. Like I, I definitely feel like we are more sensitive to people's not necessarily feelings, but like we're more sensitive to that stuff nowadays than we used to be. And, um, and also, you know, if you're going to make a wild claim like that, you have to be able to defend it properly in order for people to take it seriously so I don't think that trying to um I don't really know what I'm doing here guys I'm a bit stuck um so challenging somebody's claim and then having them later be proven right and maybe using strong language I don't think that that's like as 
yeah, it's just not, it's, that's not evidence as, as Flint said. Yeah. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yeah. Good idea. Well, haha, -ha! out of the way this time. Oh, I should save. <laughs> Um, interestingly, one of the talks that I did on my cruise ship, um, I did, which I'm actually going to make into a, um, talk on here, uh, because basically on the cruise ship, I got seasick and I had to go cut the short talk short halfway through to go puke, um, <laughs> um, is, uh, it, I call it the great fight of Giza. And, um, it's basically a talk where I've kind of covered it in my previous Pharaoh streams, um, quite a lot of the info, but I wanted to do a talk that's about everything at Giza, except the pyramids and the Sphinx to try and explain a lot of the context around the site and why we think that the pyramids are, for example, a giant burial monument. So, um, uh, like the, the I think the strongest piece for evidence is that is like there's 6,000 tombs and other graves at um, Giza arounding, surrounding the pyramids, including that of Khufu's mother, um, a lot of the wives and children of these kings. So it doesn't really make sense if everyone else is buried there, that then the biggest, largest monument there isn't for the main head honcho in charge. At least that's how it makes sense to me. Okay, I really don't know moving a lot further okay <laughs> i will go back and move the block thanks you <laughs> thanks john you're always keeping me <laughs> you're always helping me out you're like my little um my, my knobby fairy like in zelda listen if only, I could, if only youtube allowed me to make a little button with an emoji of somebody just being like listen like knobby Oh, that would be hilarious. So people could, uh, well, I'm sure it would probably get spam for that, but <laughs> weird. Okay, now this is not going to work. Yes, out. Sorry, I'm just getting too distracted with talking about archaeology stuff that I'm not really paying attention, as much attention to the game as I probably should be. Oops. I'm simply showing proof for having good debate and discussion. It's different from having to... Oh, yeah. True. I agree with you. Um, a lot closer. Well, I, but where does it need to go? Oh, I see. I know where it needs to go now. Go that way. Academics can be quite vicious. They can get quite, yeah, mean. It's actually something that I'm a bit, like, not afraid of, but, like, I've not really, like, you know, I talk to a lot of academics and, and people with PhDs as a part of my channel, but, like, I'm just waiting for one person to, you know, not that I necessarily say things wrong on this channel or anything, but, like, I think I feel a bit... Like, oh, well, I don't have a PhD sometimes. So it's like, should I really be qualified about talking about this? And I heard somebody in a conversation recently, not about me, but speaking about like an archaeologist who is popular on social media and uh, is, is somebody that's actually getting a PhD. And they were saying like, well, this person isn't really qualified because they don't publish. And I was just like, well, I don't publish <laughs> so it makes you feel like a little bit like people can be insecure and I think that's also partly sometimes with archaeology sometimes it's partly because you have to fight so hard for recognition and for grants and you know it is really competitive going for positions against other academics like we have a um like we have that kind of not bread but like this idea of competing against people and having to like kind of semi-viciously defend yourself it becomes part of your day-to-day -day, well not day-to-day -day, but like it's just it's something that starts to happen so then you know it's hard to shake that habit ah no
Yeah, I know, but I'm also not publishing research, right? Like I'm, I'm not trying to be hard on myself, but I'm not going out and doing um, digs and uh, really advancing the um, cause of archaeology, so to speak. I would I would argue that I'm, you know, I'm doing my own, I'm doing something that's equally as important, which is public engagement in archaeology, which is something that we are historically not very good at, in my opinion. Um, but I'm not going out and doing research, which for some academics is like, well, then why should we even listen to you? There we go. Okay. Gotta go kill this mummy. This is why, and they can actually end up hiring good science. I don't know, like, but what what good science would you say that Graham Hancock promotes? Because I think the thing that they were talking about a lot at the um, uh, at the debate was the Gurung Padung, which is like a it was an academic article that got published, but then um, had to be retracted because it turned out that the science was actually like really garbage. Um, These are very unusual looking mummies. Oh, where is this guy here? Okay, I'm gonna need to switch to my magnums. Ah! Ah! Uh. people like Hank Hart. sound. <laughs> Anybody else find that really uncomfortable to listen to? <laughs> Alright. Right. <laughs> These are some very interesting sounds that this guy is making. Okay. <laughs> He's allowed to look unusual, but he sounds uh, very unnerving. No, come on. I just want to get up. Why can I not get this correct? There we go. Uh, I'll be working gun as an expert. Yeah, I think it's valuable to have debate. I just think... Um, I, I agree with you. Um, I think that a lot of times academic debate is stuck in academic circles, 100%. It doesn't get put to the public. But I think some of the reasons for that is because obviously, well, we've probably never assumed that people would be interested in those kinds of debates and or... Um, um, I mean this was kind of a special occasion where academics tend to debate each other and um, <clears throat> um well the, the thing that about that i would say about hancock and his um theories is that that is frustrating is that he gives like there are people who can't tell the difference between his theories and 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 archaeology and people will take him as the truth because they haven't done the the studies and um to archaeologists it's like well 
we've spent our whole lives doing this and people don't want to listen to us. And then people like Graham get given a platform because what he says is controversial and it's debate it you know people want to engage with it for clickbait or rage bait or what have you um and okay and um the other thing that um i think people are not aware of is like graham hancock obviously has a lot of um he's published a lot of books he's had several tv shows um, and it's not to say that archaeology doesn't have that, but we certainly don't seem to get the same amount of attention as his stuff does, because what we're saying is not as controversial, and the way that it's presented is not as um, attention-grabbing, I would say. Uh, the other thing that I think people aren't aware of is, because he had this recent um, Ancient Apocalypse documentary on Netflix, is his son is the head of programming for that kind of stuff at Netflix. So he's getting nepoed in to make this kind of stuff but then they're not giving the same kind of um platform to archaeologists as they are to someone like graham hancock oh this is a nice painting oh it's see through oh this is fun this is someone giving an offering to a king it looks like um we better yeah well Never had to fight a mummy in real life, so <laughs> luckily, uh, I've never actually dug up in a, well, I've dug up, well, I say dug up, I've examined a quote-unquote vampire burial before, uh, but I've not actually done much stuff with mummies. I've only ever seen them in um, museums. I've never had to dig one up before. Okay, so that, okay. Sean, I'm being a bit slow today, so can you give me a hint about what I do next? So the, the roof opened, and um, oh, come on. roof opened above the thing, and now do I have to pull the other lever again? No, I have to get up to the another floor. All right. Oh. How do I get up there? Hmm. Okay, so I have to get on top of this block. Oh. Okay, I know how I'm going to do it. No, I don't need the hint. It's fine. It's fine. I have it mostly figured out. Thank you. You have an academic, you have peer reviewed my strategy, Jean, and uh, haha, also great tip. Peer reviewed my strategy and confirmed that it is correct. And so I'm going to proceed with my tactic. <clears throat> Just get on top of the block more. Jeez. I wonder if this would let me push it over the edge. I'm not going to um, attempt it because I'm not stupid. All right, I'm going to save from up here. Cool. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that especially, I think it's, it's obviously it's something that's like quite left over from, I think, a very different era of how things were done. And is also something that just doesn't apply nowadays when we have things like YouTube and people want quick, like easy access to information. Um, I think it, it is a really like antiquated way of thinking, but obviously like archeologists are a bit slow to adapt things on occasion, <laughs> which is why, um, uh, but yeah, certainly for me, it's like, I think, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think it was worth doing. Um, 
Um, but yeah, there are sometimes opinions out there that make you feel a bit like, mm. <laughs> isn't a feature until a much later game. Good to know. All right. You're talking to, I mean, it's not to save. Oh, I just missed what that was. <laughs> Crap. I'm just going to repull it because I missed the animation. Okay, well, I'm going to miss it either way, aren't I? All right. I like this green color. Okay, I can go across here. Uh, bring the, yeah, I think, like I said, that is definitely something that archaeologists aren't very good at. Like, it's hard. Like, public engagement is so important to know. And that's why I save. Um, and that's you know why we ultimately do what we do is to educate it's like this information is for public consumption not um not to be kept in these ivory towers but i think it's hard because you also like you know people want to hear and know about stuff that's exciting and sometimes as an archaeologist you find stuff exciting but maybe other people don't and then you get used to keeping things in your kind of like ivory tower because you just assume people won't find it interesting um, when often that is not the case. Okay, how do I get down? Do I need to go across here? I think I do. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to try it around the cat statue. Good to know. Uh! Okay. Whew. Whew. I totally looked into that. Opened up the floor around the cat statue. Oh. All right. Um, I definitely want to see whatever is on top of that area. So let's do a run and jump. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another panther around here. Okay. Okay, let's switch back to the pistols with their unlimited time. I can't shoot him up here, clearly, so... Yeah, and that's one thing that I try to do a lot of the time in like archaeology. Oh, it's a crocodile. Okay, I'm not that scared. Um, that is one thing that I try to do a lot in my channel is kind of like you said, breaking things down to a point where it's like, okay, the average person can understand this, not just somebody who's trained in archaeology, which can sometimes be difficult because you get so like it's that thing where it's like well you have to explain something that you just know and that you've known for a really long it's like you know um i think an example of this is um i read a book once where it was a, a science fiction and they were and they had this whole bit of aliens talking about how it's so weird that humans drink milk um from like cows and they're like that's so strange like nobody else does that and it's like yeah so like try and explain to somebody why you drink milk <laughs> i think sometimes that's how it comes across in archaeology okay i can't see anything mm -hmm. interesting i see yeah i'm all for public um public engagement and i will say that uh in the graham hancock debate um i did get a mention at the near the end um uh flint was pointing out that there's lots of good archaeology to consume on the internet especially youtube and my channel was one of a few that he had like a screenshot of to um like incentivize people to uh follow etc and um 
there hasn't been an influx of like 10,000 people coming to follow me, which is a bit disappointing. I would have thought the Joe Rogan podcast would have had a bit more sway than that, but it is what it is. Maybe that will happen eventually if I just keep on trucking. And so, yeah, very grateful that I got that little mention on there. Maybe I should see if uh, it would be cool one day if I could get Flint to come on the channel. Do you think guys think that that would be something you'd be interested in speaking to him or hearing what he has to say? Um, I think so. I think, like I said, he lives in Wales. So, like, he's from, he lives in the UK. He's American, but he lives in the UK. Um, so, I probably could actually... I'm sure he probably has lots of media requests now, um, but maybe in a few months, uh, once that all died down, dies down, because he's also recovering from um, cancer treatment. Um, so maybe I could have him come on the channel and speak to you guys about his work dismantling pseudo archaeological theories. Okay. Since I've gotten one cat, but the other one's still running out there in the middle of nowhere, and I don't want to, um... Oh, really it. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a professor that works in Wales, so, like, he has some other interesting stuff. And like I said, he's a second-generation archaeologist, so it would be interesting to talk to him about, like, you know, did your dad take you along on dates when you were a toddler and that helped inspire you kind of thing? Um, one of my professors is uh, at university was the son of a woman who worked for, I think it was Lewis Binford, who's the guy who invented radiocarbon dating, like, pretty big deal. Um, and I think he has photos of himself being on an excavation with his mom when he was younger. Okay, time for the magnum. Bad kitty. No. Oh, I didn't save though either. Where can I save? Okay, far enough back. Ugh. Okay, do, 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 do. It just takes so many bullets to kill these cats. I think the other thing too is that, I mean, I, like, it's like having a doctor talk to, well, actually, no, I'm not going to make that comparison. People just get sick of it because, you know, there, I mean, there are lots of archaeologists who have debunked Graham Hancock and similar like ancient alien theories and all that kind of stuff there are websites there are blogs there are articles and magazines of people that have done it and yet despite the fact that we've done it over and over and over again people are still like well i don't know and so i think sometimes you know people get sick of having to just endlessly repeat themselves which i think is also like entirely valid but i think it's great that joe rogan's podcast gave like such a big platform for this kind of discussion because that yeah like you said that doesn't often happen in um mainstream media so um and um yeah okay let's see if there's somewhere where i can jump to once those other cats come out can i go on to this i think i probably can but also oh maybe i can jump across to that bit all right i'm gonna save There's a switch behind you that will improve the lighting. What is this? Oh, I see it. Oh, and there's also something in the corner. Retro graphics coming to the, uh, well, and, and John coming to the rescue. Well, like I said, it, publishing papers on this kind of stuff is kind of hard because 
to discount a theory. Oh, okay. Uh, to discount a theory like that, you need to have like evidence to discount it. And like, you know, if Graham Hancock published a paper, like a scientific journal paper about this, people would rebuttal it, but he can't because he doesn't have evidence. So he can't get it into like a proper scientific journal. He's published his books and there are plenty of people who have um, written and talked about how his books are incorrect. But despite that, people still say, oh, well, should still do this or whatever. Um, so it just sometimes feels like it's, you know, it's um, that guy pushing a boulder up hill in like the Roman afterworld there's like you kind of end up feeling like there's only so much that you can um ah uh do uh and then you're just like well I can't be bothered bad kitty Another person. Oh, that's a bad one. No concept of data of why that specific seed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it can be difficult to piece things together to put it into like the bigger picture, but that's also work that can take a really, really, really long time. Um, but good, good to know. Good to see the perspective of people who obviously. Um, find this stuff resonates with them and um, always good to get a perspective on why people, um, I think buy-in is the wrong term, but why people give some credibility to this kind of stuff when they read it. <clears throat> Sisyphus, no, it's not Sisyphus. It's not, is it Atlas? It's not Atlas. I have to, or maybe it is Sisyphus. I have to think. Yeah, as a as I pointed out, getting archaeologists to work together can, can be quite hard. So that's probably why you don't have some of that. Oh Jesus! Ah! Oh my God! I just. Whew. Okay, I need to take a second. This is what happens when you have a sixty second lag. <laughs> oh no! Did I not save? That was stupid. Oh, man. Okay, well, I need to make sure that I don't do all this shit again. I like how there's not a um, statue in the modern version. Or unless they get dropped from the ceiling or something. Oh, they must get dropped from the ceiling when I pull that lever. <laughs> Damn this chat delay. Yeah, sorry. All right, there is a trick that can help here. Get lined up with the platform in the middle, back up, jump on the spot three times, then run, jump, and grab. All right, well, I'll try it. Lined up, I'm lined up, okay. Jump back, one, two. <laughs> I feel like you're just telling me this as like a haha like gotcha and didn't work anyway so now I'm gonna have to fight the uh, ah let me up let me up okay Bad kitty. Why you gotta be so vicious? Why can't you be nice like my kitten? He's so nice. He's been just coming up for cuddles all day since we got back from our trip. 
because he's the best. The best cucumber there ever was. Alright, let's save. Mm -hmm. Also, I didn't go over here, which... Uh, is this... Oh. oh, so I could get out that way. Good to know. Oh, oh and there's... Okay, more cats. And there's a shotgun shell over there. Hmm. All right, well, let's take care of the cats first. Oh, God. No, 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 Lara. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. No, go. Jump. Jump. Oh, yeah. Why do they have a... What does a compass do? Is that just like a thing that they put in for show? Because archaeologists do use compasses. We do read maps. That is a thing. Bad kitties. Oh, it shows my stats. Hmm. Good to know. Alright, got one. I wonder if animal activists hate this game because of how much you end up having to kill wildlife. Certainly, I can see that being a thing. Alright. I'm also going to get the shotgun out. Let, let's see. Okay, what's my health at? Not great. So, do this. I'm going to go for Mr. Shotgun. For that mummy. Because I just really don't feel like dealing with that. And then we're going to jump up and save. And we're going to go deal with this guy. Um, people who've played the game, how far am I through this level? I would like to know. I doubt it's very far, because it seems like there were four things that I had to get for that column, and I haven't even gotten one. So, I have a feeling I haven't gotten very far. <laughs> Probably because I've spent this whole time faffing, because I'm just... Ah! <laughs> Killing humans, yeah, just killing bad guys. <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> preferable. <sighs> Is there someone else that I'm gonna have to take out here? I'm just waiting. Okay. Okay. The east, oh, okay, there's another block over there. The lighting is so much better. This game is so dark. Like, ugh. I prefer the modern graphics, but not if they're gonna be like this. Like, where I can't, where if the minute the sun's out, I can't actually see anything. The end is near. Oh, okay, good to know. Well, we've got 20 minutes left until my video premiere, so talking to JP, he reached out to me, I think, a while back on Reddit, saying he would be happy to be interviewed. Seems like such a nice guy as well, I will say. Um, really interesting story. He actually used to um, work 
I just give you a bit of preview of a little bit of what we're going to talk about is he used to work as a railroad person. His whole family, like like a railroader, that's how he described it. His family had done it. He was from a lower class background. Um, you know, his dad and um, a lot of his family had just worked on, I presume, laying railroads um, for most of their life. And then uh, during a time when he got laid off, he decided to go to school and pursue archaeology, which I think is really cool. And now he's getting a PhD. So if he can do it, so can you. Um, and yeah, he has some really interesting stuff to talk about. He focused mostly on um, stuff in Oklahoma in the US. Um, works a lot with uh, a lot of uh, First Nations populations as well. Save. Good. I will do that right now. What are, okay, why won't you pull, pull the lever? Do I go back? Do I go back to the beginning now? I guess so. Like, there's really no. Oh, no, that's the door I came in. That's a different. This is a different window. Hmm. Okay. Aha! Trap door. Oh, nope. Oops. That's the way I came. Okay. I can do that. Only just, but, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hold it. Didn't I? Yeah. Wait, where was the bit? I don't remember. Probably not. Okay. Let's see. I have to do for this. Okay. Yeah. No! Mara, why you gotta do me like that? I'm just trying to get things done. just so I've done this. <laughs> Anybody got any exciting plans for the weekend? I am doing nothing because I have, despite the fact that I just spent a bunch of time on a cruise ship, I am surprisingly tired. <laughs> and I have a bunch of life admin that I have to do. Um, no! I got across it in the first one, and now I just, like, can't even jump across a simple thing. It just shows that my brain's going a bit 
you know, I don't know if anybody else here has ever done sewing, but sometimes you just need to put the project down and back away from the sewing machine. And that's what I'm feeling a bit like right now. In a minute, I need to just take a break from Lara and her fact that she won't listen to me when I tell her what to do with controls. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I mean, I don't want to shit on it and say that it was a rubbish time, because it certainly wasn't. There were parts of it that were very enjoyable, but it definitely didn't end up being as relaxing as I would have wanted it to be. Um, mostly because I didn't have my luggage. Ah! But it arrived today, so that's all that matters. It came back from Cape Town and it had everything in it, so <clears throat> that's good. Okay, yeah. The Qatar Airways live chat leaves much to be desired. I will say two, three. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to save. Mm. All right, where am I now? Hmm. Oh, so now I can get up here. But did I not go up here before? I think I did. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. As hi Maxim. Yeah, it's not something. Well, it's something that if you subscribe, you can see every few weeks <laughs> on on uh, on YouTube. Okay, I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to go now. I don't think I'm supposed to go back here. This is where I came from. That's how I got up. Am I just supposed to? I guess I must be supposed to go here. That must be it. I have a lot of back and forth in this level. I'm not really enjoying it. No, I've definitely been up here before. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Okay, so this was where I was before. Right, so I just put in a bunch of sand down there. Oh, maybe I am supposed to go through that corridor. Maybe I'm just getting mixed up. Okay. Go back. Oh, no. Oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. I see. Mm hmm. Okay, I got it. Well, I say I got it, sort of. Hmm. Face plant into the wall, standard. Oh, so cute one. See? There we go. One. I've got ten minutes. Okay. Sorry. Ah, I did it! <laughs> I finished a level inside of one stream. Go me. That's not, unfortunately, typical. <laughs> Do I now have a next bit? What's this? All right. This is the west. 
say compass. Tell me where I am. The obelisk commune. Ah. According to the two. Oh, really? Well, certainly I think they would probably make for very interesting reading. This does not look like an obelisk, guys. I've got news for you. Obelisks tend to be very tall and narrow blocks of solid stone. They do not have weird underground bits. Like what we see here. Alright. So. Mm. Okay, so I have to jump over one more step. I'm just going to have a bit of a preview of the next bit. Where's this obelisk? This is not an obelisk, guys. This is the exact opposite of an obelisk. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's some nice chairs. Oh, 100%. This chair is based on the uh, chair. Oh, I'm going to take a picture of this. Um, how did I get it? Um, I'm just going to do it this way. Um, this is based on the chair of Queen Hetaparas, mm. the mother of Khufu, who, um, you have done something. Now that I've used my mouse, stop. <laughs> um, the mother of Hetaparas, uh, Khufu, uh, sorry, Hetaparas the first, mother of Queen King Khufu, um, that is 100% based on a chair that was found in her tomb. And we have a nice sarcophagus here. Some granite sarcophagi as well. Oh, I haven't gotten to the obelisk yet. Oh, I think I cut myself off saying this. One of the things I'm quite enjoying about this level is all the color on the, all the Egyptian like monuments and stuff like that. That's something that I think. I mean, restoration is tricky. You know, there's how much do you want to preserve something and how much do you want to restore it, especially if we don't exactly know how it would have looked in antiquity and sometimes it's a lot of guesswork. So I think that's why it doesn't tend to get done as much as people think. But um, something I'm really enjoying about this game is the amount of color that you're seeing because, you know, Egyptians were a garish people. As you can see here, they like to have color in all of their stuff and all of their monuments would have been maybe not whitewashed, but like painted uh, with bright, vibrant colors that since then have um, uh, been worn away by natural elements. And so when we look at Egyptians and even like e Greco-Roman sculpture and stuff like that as well, we think of them as these like kind of really sterile um, civilizations. And in fact, they we probably actually would think that they were Probably somewhat garish, especially if you're the kind of person who loves your um, beige interiors. Oh, right. One leads to fights and pickups. One leads only to a fight. Alright. Well... I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> What's down here? That looks oh well. Okay, that's kitty. Uh -oh. Okay, can I not put the camera through here? Apparently not. Oh, but there's a lever okay that's door number two let's look at door number one <clears throat> possibly more mirrors okay and they look like there's much to do here how much that can be done here, unless I'm vastly missing something. 
pickups, pickups, pickups. Okay. Go back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay, so we're going to move that block back. nothing on this side so not the other one so I think the one that I okay so first off we're going to put this cat back because I do not want to fight it and we'll save this one kitten ta-da and I think the room with the crocodiles doesn't have anything in it either because but the other room ah Okay. Um, didn't notice that there was a further one in there as well. The item in the water. Okay. Theoretically, I should probably just actually, I should wrap this up in a few minutes. So, and then my next one can be the obelisk of Kamun. Um, oh, is this the obelisk? Ooh, I could go through the wall. Ah, ah, okay, okay. A bit more obelisky. Oh. Oh, and these are all the things that go into the obelisk in front of the sphinx. So we have, let's see, we have a scarab. Nice. Um, it looks like it's supposed to be a wadjet eye. Okay. An ankh, pretty standard. And then a tablet with some hieroglyph on it. Okay. Oh, let's see, I gotta investigate. Is the top of this, well, this isn't really an ob, well, it's not a true Egyptian obelisk because. Uh, well, it's got a med pack on top of it, but really you should have that pyramidal ben ben top. But I suppose I can't get too picky. Oh. Mm. Good to get an idea of what I'll be going up against next time. Mm -hmm. Some water. Okay, so I'm going to have to open something. That's how I'm going to get into the room. So, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to be coming back here. Yeah, nice preview. Like I said, this is what we'll be looking at next time we play in two Fridays time on the 3rd of May. Yes, that's correct. So, um, yeah, 3rd of May is going to be the next live stream. It'll be this level. I'm going to do some advanced reading so that I can go through it a bit faster than I do the other one, but still. Um, Abby. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining me. I hope that you've had an entertaining time today on Inside Archaeology, watching me play this game, had some good discussions in the chat. Enjoyed having you here. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like. Um, if you really feel like contributing, I have a Ko-fi page or super thanks, etc. Those are always appreciated. Um, uh, next video, this is when I end this, it's going to take you straight to um, my uh, premiere, which is Ask an Archaeologist JT Lewis. I'm going to be in the live chat there. So happy to continue any conversations or questions um, that anybody might have. And um, yeah, thanks so much for coming along and watching me play. I always appreciate it. Like I said, I did miss you guys while I was away. So um, I always enjoy um, having a chat and seeing what people have to say and playing the game as I slowly, slowly, slowly make my way through it. So hopefully it's not too frustrating for you guys. So I will see you on the next live stream and or in the chat in just a few minutes. So have a good rest of your weekend and thanks so much for coming along. I'll see you guys next time.